You're muted. Why are you muted? Let's see how you're muted. Now talk. Now I can. There you are. Hey, I am so excited. Oh, oh my God. Where are you? I've never seen that background. Because you didn't watch the last Facebook Live then. <laughs> no, people were like, I get too distracted from the background. And oh. So, um, like, you know, everybody has an opinion about what I do. So I got that. Okay. okay. Where <laughs> are you? I'm still in the same office. Oh, just different yeah. wall? Okay. That's just, see, it's a paper. It's a material. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a backdrop. Pretty good. So I can block off all of my, you know, stuff out there. So. You want to hear something funny? Tell me something. Your hair looks really pretty, by the way. Well, thank you. So I just picked a card. Yeah. So you're not going to believe what it said. Round and round. No. <gasps> of course it does. Is that hysterical? You're only going to be that way for a minute. And then you're going to forget. And everybody says, too, let's do that again. That was so much fun. I know. And you know why? Because you know how to talk. So Okay. Well, I do talk a lot, don't I? <laughs> I know. So um, I'm going to just introduce you. And then um, I'm going to just have you do a little bit of introduction about who you are. Okay. I don't know how, you, you know, you just think about, I'm sure you have thought about who you are. What you want to say, right? Not really. <laughs> you'll, you'll wing it. Just talk about who you are and what you do. Okay. And then, um, and then I'll just go into what you do, or unless we go into it naturally by what you say about the table tipping, and then we'll just go on with questions. And, and I think, is there any main questions that you want to tell people that maybe you have experienced a lot in your... Doing well, um, I think it's kind of good to, if you started, like, how I got started. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Right. And yeah. then just, you know, one thing, it's just not for everybody just to pick up a table and start, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, calling in the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I enough, there is no drinking, too. I oh, yeah. 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 Um, and no... Um, I think that's it really just, you know, some different experiences we've had with the table walking and talking and hugging. Hugging is so important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to really go into the healing side of it. Okay. So that's another one of my questions is some of the experiences that you have and how you've witnessed the healing that's come from it. Right. And the way that, you know, the other thing is that this is just one modality of time right. spirit of many and this is just one that's safe for a lot of people to do versus going to a medium because i don't think people really look at it as a mediumship really i hadn't until recently no and it's funny because the woman that i work for in foxborough she mm -hmm. would doing some um promotion of some things and she said to me is table tipping um physical mediumship <laughs> Like she didn't even know. I was I was surprised, you know. Well, so. I think it's how you really start getting into all the different um, ways of doing mediumship, like art. That's mediumship. Right. Um, cards even can be that. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. Right. Auto journaling. Yep. Channel. Everything. There's so many different things, yeah. and you know, we just I found our niche. Yeah, <laughs> I watched a thing this morning on. Um, um, oh, shoot, he, suicide. Oh. 
Oh, it'll come back to me. Robin Williams. I don't know oh. why brain freeze on that. And he was talking about Shirley MacLaine making fun of her uh, channeling. And <laughs> now why can't you just talk in a normal voice? Why does it have to be all that gravelly? So he was hilarious. But then oh I was offended by his lack of believing, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we have 10 minutes. I was thinking we were close to that. I'm all ready to go. All I have to do. So what we'll do is we'll do the whole live. And then at the end of it, which I, a lot of times I forget to tell people, um, at the end, when I say goodbye, we don't go away. We're on this platform still. We just okay. stop doing the live. So you won't be like disconnected. Okay. At the end, I, I always forget to tell people and they're thinking that they're just going to be gone and they're not. And they look at me like, <laughs> okay. All right. How does so, I'm just trying to think of what am I going to say about myself? Well, I would say that you started out as a court reporter and that you got into, what was your first thing that you got into? Tarot reading. That's what I thought. Okay. So then you started doing tarot cards and then you started learning about mediumship and through that, that you came into different forms of me. You know, Okay. I would say, you know, the other thing I, when I introduce you, I'm going to talk about you um, being an expert in teaching about joy. So, you know, talk about those kinds of things that you do. There's okay. a lot, Marsha. I, right, I, I should have thought of this, that you would, I guess I kind of in the back of my radar was like, I wonder if she's going to have problems with that. There's so many things you do. Yeah, there I mean, are so many you know, things. I know. You do all this stuff at the, um, the over the moon, blue moon, whatever that moon place is. Yeah, healing, healing moon. Healing moon. <laughs> There's so many moons now. I know. Uh, I know. You know, you, you do, so you can talk about doing readings. You could talk about um, doing the classes that you do, that, you know, you're developing this spirituality practice or however you want to put it. So um, I just talked to my friend. I was getting these, these great ideas the other night of, you know, I wanted to rent my office and then I'm thinking, I think I might do keep part of it court reporting, like just my desk. Mm -hmm. and I might, I might do some stuff over there. So I'm, I think you should getting pushed in that direction, Joanne. I Joanne, we have to do a retreat. That has been on my mind. In fact, I was debating bringing it up today because I brought it up once and you're who I'm doing it with, hopefully Marilyn as well. But, um, so I was on the fence about doing it and I thought, you know what? No, what I think we should do is come up with a plan and then have a Facebook live based on that sole subject. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Unless yeah. we, unless it naturally comes up in the conversation, because I've already mentioned it. Yeah. Unless it comes up naturally in the conversation, we'll kind of like brush by it just to get it out in the universe. Right. Yeah. Oh, and you know what I want to make sure I do? is um, my friend who I do table tipping with, I have to be clear that it is not me and me alone. Do you know well, what I mean? Why? Okay. I don't, okay. Wow. No, I shouldn't have a fit in a, because we do Beth? table tipping together all the time. Is this Beth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. the whole point of this conversation isn't about you. It's about the subject of table tipping that you are the expert in. Right. Because are you going to, okay, the, at the end, I was thinking, do you want to do how to get a hold of you kind of thing? Or what do you want to do about that? Well, do people want readings and stuff. Um, for readings. Yeah, I, I suppose. What I'll say is that you will post a way to get a hold of your, okay. in the, because I, unless you want to tell me what you want me to tell them. Um, or I'll just ask you. <laughs> I don't know. How, how would, I mean, I just have my, but my email is, um, art, you know what I mean? Well, I do have. What's wrong with the beat art? Well, we could do that. I have joyful soul as well. What are Hold you going to, what are you going to use as your business thing? You I want to use my joyful soul one. Hold well, on a second. Email. Find it.
You ready? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. I'm not. Oh. I like. You're so professional. <laughs> Thank you. I put on okay. a good face, don't I? You go ahead. Never mind face. It's Masha at. I can't say it the way you do. I know. <laughs> at uh, joyful j o y f u l hyphen soul dot com. Okay. All right. Okay. I wonder if I should put that in the. I have the whole thing written out. Mm, okay, here. Oops. Marsha at Joyful. Whoops. Joyful hyphen soul. Yeah. Joyful. So, okay. Okay, that'll be in the thing. All right. All right. I'm gonna. I go. I'm just gonna start it up. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay. Do what? I haven't. Wow. I feel like I haven't done this, and it's been like two weeks. Okay. Oh, it'll all work. Okay. Going to my face. Okay, I'm just, I'm not going to be live yet, but it's going to that page so I can set it up. Okay. Mm. Sounds like we're like right here with each other. <laughs> so I've been, um, where am I going to move all week? Because I need to move. And uh, I was really looking at, hold on, let me do this. It goes away if I don't do it quickly. Facebook oh. like me doing like me doing it on a um, third party. So I have to get it all done and just cut and paste and go. Okay. Tag. Okay. Oops, I didn't do that right. Okay. All right. We're going to go live. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Joanne Eisen here for another uh, show of You Are Unlimited TV. And today I have a special guest, Marsha Johnson, and I'm a little concerned because right now I see me and I don't see you, Marsha. <laughs> um, mine says live on Facebook. But where are you? Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, hold on just one second. Let me see why. Uh, do you see you, Marsha? Uh-huh. Do you see you on the live? I do. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, everybody. Hiccup in the technical department here. I'm still not seeing you on the live. Okay, I'm going to keep going forward because you see us, so I'm going to go that everything is fine. Okay. Um, I am going back into, I'm still, I only see me on there. Do you see you from your... Um, I can see both of us. There we go. Okay, I see us both now. I am so sorry. Please okay. forgive me. I um, I didn't have a, both of us set up right. Okay, so now that I've done all of that, thank you, thank everybody for joining us today. I appreciate you all taking the time to come and spend this time with us. Um, today we have Marsha Johnson. Marsha Johnson is a very dear friend of mine who I think is the most awesome human being and so happy to be sharing this time with. Um, she also is very talented and an expert at teaching about joy and how to bring joy into your life. She had a very challenging time period in her life where she had to rely on that, and it was very beneficial. One day we'll have to talk about that. And the other thing is she's an awesome listener, and she listens to spirit really well. 
and she has developed some great techniques in mediumship. So Marsha, would you please, please introduce yourself to everybody? Well, thank you, Joanne, and hi, everybody. I appreciate everybody coming today. This is exciting to talk about. So um, I am a, a many things, but I am a court reporter first and foremost. I've been doing that for many, many years. And um, through the years, I started with doing tarot cards from way back when I was just a youngster. And um, that's evolved into um, doing now uh, spirit mediumship, um, psychic readings, all different kinds of readings, and um, just communicating with spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a great love of mine. Yes, it is. And it's very beneficial. So one of the things, okay, so I advertise this as the table whisperer, because a lot of people are unfamiliar with a type of mediumship called table tipping. And that is something that you do. Could you tell people about that? I will. So table tipping is a form of physical mediumship, mm -hmm. which means it's the spirit will physically move this table. Um, it's different than mental mediumship where you'll have a medium and will channel or get information and we'll just talk about what information they're getting from a loved one. Table tipping is physical mediumship where you sit around, usually a three-legged table is what we use, um, a wooden table. Uh, everybody sits around the table. We have small tables that will fit one or two. We have a big table that you can fit 10 or 12 around the table. Mm -hmm. So spirit, you know, I can go through the whole how we start it, but the general theme of it is spirit comes through and will tap out the alphabet and give you messages, mm -hmm. yes, no, or even longer messages. Um, we have a different table that spins, which I happen to love. Comes through and we'll tap <laughs> out the alphabet. Sorry, that was me. I was responding and I, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's okay, that's okay. okay. <laughs> day to day, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So um, I'm trying to think of where I'm at. So you were talking about it uh, taps the alphabet. It will tap out an alphabet and, you know, you ask it questions and I like it. So I do work with um, a friend of mine as a partner. We do this all the time together, which works out wonderfully. And um, we started doing a table that spins. So this table um, instead of tapping out the alphabet, which can get a little rough, mm -hmm. the table go with legs can break and the table can move. Um, so ours spins and, and we didn't know, but it's spun and it spins out the alphabet. And you ask it questions. We call it conversation with spirit. And I think that's why I was so drawn to it because you have a conversation. So if I were with you, Joanne, and we we're sitting at a table, and I got, you know, your dad on the table, you could then say, you know, dad's here and Joanne, what do you want to say to dad? And you can ask questions and he'll answer. So it's really a, uh, it's so personal. It's a wonderful, instead of just getting somebody telling you what they're getting, mm -hmm. you can ask questions. Yes. Well, let's, let's go back a minute. Um, how did you get started in table tipping? What brought you to that form? So at, one point I was taking classes in all kinds of mediumship and anything I could get my hands on. And I saw this class on facilitating table. I didn't, I had never even heard of the table. I, I didn't know what it was. So I called up my friend and I said, let's go. She said, okay. So she was always game for everything. And I was too. So we went to this class and it was teaching us how to do table tipping. And I remember the first time <laughs> the table moved you, so your, your, your channel, right? Your, the energy is going through you onto your hands and the table is moving. And we were looking under the table. We look at each other and say, are you doing that? No, I'm not. Are you doing that? So we took this class uh -huh. and um, that weekend we went out and bought every table we could buy. <laughs> we built the car with, it had to be wooden three right. tables. Uh -huh. So we bought our tables. We couldn't even fit in the car. It was so awesome. We were like on our laps and mm -hmm. we get home and we sat at the table 
and we sat there for 20 minutes and we just had our hands on the table and it wasn't moving. We we're waiting for it to tip because we had learned with the, the tipper. So it's a three leg. So we'll go up on one and then go back down for A. Mm -hmm. and up on one, back down for B. And when it stopped, it would be the letter. Well, we didn't even know, but our table was a spinner, like a lazy Susan. Mm -hmm. They called old Victorian tea tables. Mm -hmm. So how it was in the old Victorian days, they would put tea on this big round table and it was called a pie crust too because the edges are all scalloped uh -huh, uh -huh. and then if you're sitting across from me and you want tea i would just turn the table over to you and you'd get your tea and you'd turn it back so they called victorian tea tables uh -huh. so all of a sudden our table moved and we had no idea it was spinning it was the most exciting moment of you know we were just like oh wow so um, we figured out, it took a long time to figure out what we were doing, how it was working. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just trying to think of how we got together. So we started doing this and we do it sporadically. Mm -hmm. We would get together maybe once a month, mm -hmm. once every couple months and try it. And it was okay, but it was never great. It was, mm -hmm. it was good. Mm -hmm. And then we made a commitment to mm -hmm. spirit and that's when spirit shows up right so we knew spirit knew that usually on fridays we were doing it thursday mm -hmm. or friday one day mm -hmm. during the week mm -hmm. and we made a commitment to spirit we're going to be there every week and when we committed to that spirit committed to us mm -hmm. and it took off we it, every time we met it was it just got better and better and better i think you said something really important that you know, I hope people can really get because when we commit, we're taking that step forward. That's when spirit says, okay, I'm going to commit to you because spirit's always around us, right? It's always right. around us, but we don't always trust or ask for the help. So that's what you were doing is you were asking for help and spirit said, okay, let's play. Let's go. That's right. We were, we were asking for help. And um, mm -hmm. at that time it, it, it evolved. So, yeah. um, so much from the very beginning to just a little, you know, tiny little messages. Yeah. So I'll tell you. So now our table will walk. It, it walks. I can't believe it. It walks across the room. It will tip up. It will hug. It will squeak out words. We have this one table. We have two in particular that we use. One, it looks like a, a jigsaw puzzle. We call it the puzzle table. And that's small. We can fit, you know, a few people around it. And that's generally the one we use. Mm -hmm. The bigger one, which is extremely heavy. And that one will actually, when that one goes up on one leg, spirit is, you, you can't even believe when it just lifts up. Every, it feels light as a feather. And spirit is giving, you know, a hug to whoever it's going towards. Mm -hmm. So the first time... You know, it, like I said, it evolved. Yeah. And the table actually chased my father across the room. And he was running, we're running, and we, we couldn't believe it. And it walks and it it goes to, um, it gives so much love and energy mm -hmm. that you can, you can feel it. And the, the person who needs it the most, it goes right to, and you can feel, you can feel spirit mm -hmm. it, right through that that piece of table. It's yeah. Well, let's go back again. Um, because I know that I learned about table tipping through you and I absolutely love it. And we've done it together many times. And I didn't just pick up a table and start doing it. So what do people know about if they want to get into table tipping? What would be your suggestion? Okay. So um, we, all of our tables have come through antique stores. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, or yard sales, but mostly antique stores and things like that. We have a lot of tables, <laughs> ranging from little to, to enormous. It's, uh -huh. they're, all, they're all spinners. We have a couple tilters that we use occasionally, but you know, we, we like the spinners. Please find me a spinner, please. I, I will, I, I will. Love love a spinner yet. Yet. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. And they are the best. Me, I, me. I will. <laughs> okay. So um, the one thing that you want to do is, we always clean the table. Mm -hmm. We use uh, sea salt and water and it's always cleansed. Mm -hmm. Every time when we do a table session, 
we um, do the same thing every time. It's, I don't, I don't want to say it's a ritual because it's not really a ritual, but it's something just that make we, sure that you have everything clean and all the energies that are negative are gone. Clean. Right. We sage the room. Mm -hmm. We have oil, frankincense and myrrh that we put mm -hmm. on our wrists. Um, we do a beautiful meditation mm -hmm. every time. Um, a couple of times, it's funny because we, um, so we work with Merlin, mm -hmm. Ascended Master, who comes mm -hmm. down and facilitates the table with us. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we get like, oh, we don't feel like doing the, the meditation tonight. Let's skip it. <laughs> well, we can't skip it. Table won't work. So we have, we do these things every single time. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. And mm -hmm. I think the key is to make an appointment with spirit and mm -hmm. let them know you're going to be there. Um, and you're serious about it because mm -hmm. this is not a game. It's not a mm -hmm. um, fun and game, something to do when you're drinking with your friends and having a glass of wine and say, hey, let's do a table. It, it is serious business. Oh, I'm hearing that the video stopped again. Hold on. It's, like, it's not going to be technical problem day. I put okay. that out there and it's not. Uh, let me see what happened. Let me make sure. I don't know if we want to go off and go live again or if we want to just keep going, which we can. Um, uh, I don't know what you see, but mine says live on okay. Facebook. Uh, maybe it was hers. I'm looking to see if mine is live. I'm sorry, you guys. This is okay. We're just going to keep going. Okay. I, I have the recording, so I can put it on there anyway if it did stop. But this happened the last time where it stopped halfway, and then I had to put the other the recording on because we lost half of it <laughs> All right. okay. okay so you make an appointment with spirit which is so important and mm -hmm. the other thing is to not just go into it like it's a game because you want to be careful and make sure your vibration is a level high enough that you're bringing in the right kind of spirits right exactly always and um so like i said we do the beautiful meditation and then we ask spirit to come in and a lot of times when we do an event, mm -hmm. we might say tonight, we're going to get, we usually will have the table walk to everybody. That's a pretty great thing. What mm -hmm. color does spirit see you as? That's pretty cool. And you know, and everybody always gets a different color. And what does the color mean? Or we'll ask spirit, um, what, how do they see you? What's your spiritual strength? You know, wow. you might be, um, you know, your spiritual strength is compassion. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then they'll give a little talk about it. And then that person can ask, uh, we'll do spirit guides, like an animal totem. Like what's your animal totem that's with you mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. I have a funny story about that. Cause this, this is just amazing how spirit works. Okay. So, so. the woman yes. got a bat. Yes. And she didn't want a bat. She was like, a bat? I don't want a, I don't want a bat. So we said, well, all right, we read about a bat. I forget what it said, but it was nice. But we gave her another animal. She's like, I, she insisted. I wanted to have something else besides a bat. I said, okay. When she left, it was dark. It was 10 o'clock at night. And we go outside. We're walking her to her car. And what comes flying but a bat buzzed us all right then and there. And we're like, you were meant to have that bat. <laughs> so, um, And that was a lesson for her to not to not argue with spirit about what they're That's trying right. to teach her. <laughs> you, you trust, you, you take what they give uh, you and yeah. regardless. Um, so then the table, you know, we do this every single time. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. And then, you know, after the table will walk and it will give everybody a hug. Um, we then go to a bigger table for all of us and we'll have a loved one come in. And every, that's when, it is beyond special. It's, mm -hmm. it, it is so healing. You, you, to see these, these people, like they're, they're almost hugging the table because their loved one, you know, a son or a daughter, or a mother, a husband, anybody will come through and they can feel it. And they'll always get a message from their loved one. Aww. It's so, like, I have goosebumps now just thinking about Aww. it. It's just amazing. Um, I want to put in, we did go off 
And so I'm sorry, I was a little distracted there because I went back on and kind of rebooted things. And so it looks like we're back on, but if you guys uh, missed part of it, I'll put the whole, re the whole thing, the full version of this on the Facebook as well. So I'm sorry for the hiccup. I don't know what happened, but it did. Okay. Okay. So um, what's very important, well, first of all, I don't know how much of this you can go into, but what is the history of how this started, the table tipping thing? Wow. Or the, the use of the table for mediumship. How did that start? Do you know? You know, I don't know when it started. And that's um, my friend's Beth is the expert okay. on the history of table. Okay. But I do know, I don't know what, when it started, what year it started. But back with the, in the Victorian era is when it started. And that's what people at that time did for entertainment. Mm -hmm. So you would come over and... People say people in the neighborhood, everybody would have their own table. And, you know, wow. I would say, Joanne, how's your table tonight? And you'd say, mine's great. And tell me about you. And then ask about my table. So, uh -huh. and that's how it, it came about. And then it, you know, went out of favor mm -hmm. for a little while. And a lot of people still don't know about it. They're afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, Why do you think I've they're never, afraid of it? People are afraid. Yeah. They're afraid. Um, Similar to like a Ouija board. They think it's like a Ouija board, mm -hmm. which even a Ouija board, you know, we take every precaution, you know, we call in Archangel Michael, we call in the angels and God and to, to be with us, the white light. Uh, we don't allow any negative spirits. I don't, you know, it's never happened to us because. Well, that's a good point because Merlin is your guide. Merlin is the one who's directing and guiding anything right. that comes through that doorway. And you have a pact with Merlin that you only work with the right, the highest light, right? So that's a big part of it as well. And, and that is part of, you know, you set your intention mm -hmm. and our intention is set at the beginning that we only work with the highest of the high mm -hmm. and the best and we are only going to get messages of love and healing that people mm -hmm. need to hear. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we get. And it, it's, a, it's such a beautiful thing. Well, you've had some really, like you've had cool experience where you get a new table and the new table will do something to the original table. Can you talk about that? I love that oh, story. I know. Well, <laughs> well actually, the, um, the old table, so we'll yeah. have a new table that uh -huh. would be set up in the room you know and we're using uh -huh. only one obviously the, the uh -huh. old table and the table will walk over to the new table and tip into it mm -hmm. it's like giving it you know its energy welcoming it to our tribe of tables uh -huh. <laughs> and it's it's i think it's just giving it energy uh -huh. and um welcoming it and then we're using that table as well well, it's almost like you've, you know, you've started this with the respect of working with all of the, because the table itself is not moving. No. The table itself is a tool of spirit to use. And exactly. someone did ask, why would you only use a wooden table versus a metal table? Although I have seen metal tables used or met, uh, tables that have metal in it, but the most preferred would be a wooden Table. Exactly. I've, I've used a plastic table before. <laughs> you know, I've used the a square plastic table with four mm -hmm. legs. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't really care for that. Um, it's the, the three leg, I think it's easier for the, the, the tapping or tilting if it's going to tilt back and forth, you know, you go up on one. But it's just, I don't, I don't know why wood has always been our way. And I like the old, like you should see our tables are beat up. Mm -hmm. They have stains and cracks. They've been places. They have stories. They, I, I, the wood holds the energy. That's what I was going to say. Wood is a better conductor. Metal isn't. But right. on the other hand, I've actually seen people use all metal tables. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it has also to do with the fact that the wood is um, a part of the elements and it's a natural form. And so it has a higher vibration than metal. Would. All the metals of element too. So I take that back. Forget that whole thing. Wood just well, seems like it's more... It would re it would resonate at a higher vibration, right? And and you know, this is how we do it. Everybody is going to find their own way that is going to 
resonate with them. And, you know, right. when we started, we do it different now than when we first started. It. You know, things, yeah. things, they evolve. You find things that yeah. work and, and right. things that don't. But the, the key that we found that works is our commitment mm -hmm. to working with spirit. And, you know, we take whatever, you know, table has to say to us and, um, We've had, I, I, and it's, it doesn't sound, it sounds a little crazy to say this, but I always say it's, it's not a good night unless somebody cries. <laughs> and normally, and meaning because they have yeah. been touched. Right. And I'm usually the one crying. You know, it is just amazing what you can feel. And you have the camaraderie of, so you have to picture mm -hmm. we're having a table event and it's nice mm -hmm. if we have a family come in, right? And, you know three or four or five family members and they all know each other and they're talking to each other. But sometimes we'll do an event and you may come by yourself and somebody else may come with a friend and we might have six people who don't know each other. Uh -huh. And you're having a conversation with a loved one and we're saying, Joanne, what do you want to say to your dad? <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, in front of all your friends, you know, you have this personal um, conversation. So sometimes it gets a little difficult, you know, and you know, you'll get messages, but usually it'll be something uh, that you will understand. Yes. It will be a personal message to you. And they might say, you know, thank you for taking care of me and uh, just different things. And in the love, I, I have to tell you a story. We had this woman on the table and her son had passed. Mm -hmm. And when he, it, this was the first time we have the, the big table, the first time that it actually squeaked out. Wow. It squeaked out mama. Like, wow. I, I now just thinking about that because, you know, I, I forget he said his name and forgive me, but I, I can't remember mm -hmm. his name, but I remember that so vividly because mm -hmm. it just, and it was trying to get our attention. It was the first time it had done it and it kept, we were asking it to spell something and it would just go, uh, uh, and we were like, well, what, what is that? So a lot of times that goes on. You have yeah. to, you're like a detective. You have to figure out what happened. Uh -huh. yeah. And it spelled out mama. Oh. Like, and that woman, you know, she put her head down on that table and hugged that table. You can feel the love and the healing that happened for her, that it was the most beautiful thing. So why do you think that this is such a healing process for people on this side to connect that way with people on the other side? It's because you can actually feel the energy. You can, mm -hmm. you can, so you can feel when one spirit comes in and mm -hmm. someone's gone, the table might feel heavy. Mm -hmm. the, the table all of a sudden feels light. Mm -hmm. And so you can tell when somebody's there and you can, so uh, it brings in a lot of other mediumship. So um, qualities, right? Right. You can smell. You might smell roses from your grandmother. That that was her favorite flower. Mm -hmm. You can see like a mist that will come by, or you can feel. You can you you physically feel the different things, and you can smell, and it's, it's so healing. It's, it's like you're, you're with that person one more mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, thank you, Marilyn. You've asked a lot of questions. I'm trying to get them in, but um, sometimes it's hard. Uh, it, it, it isn't spooky. Like some, okay. So we've had a couple of times where people were uptight or nervous about it. Um, but I would say that it depends on what kind of energy you bring into it. Right. And, and, what would make, like, we had an experience where you felt the change of the energy and you knew mm -hmm. that another spirit had come in. How do you regulate and help people or talk to people that feel like I've talked to several that are like, I won't do it. It's evil. It's bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do put it in the same category as the Ouija board, but the Ouija mm -hmm. board, one, wasn't made for that. The Ouija board had a different um, purpose when it was made. But you can also use anything for evil or good, right? Mm -hmm. So how, what, what would you say to people that are really afraid of using that kind of mediumship? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I am not afraid 
because I think what we do when we start, we have such a connection to spirit mm -hmm. and we set our intention mm -hmm. that this, there's nothing bad that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There is nothing bad. And, 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 you know, when we start with our beautiful meditation, mm -hmm. we call in spirit who we have a deep, deep connection to. I trust Merlin. I trust spirit to be with me and to guide me and my angels. That room is full Mm -hmm. The room is the, is so full you can hear knocks and you can see spirit lights and I know we are divinely protected. Well, I think that you kind of said it too, because I really want to point this out because I know both of us have experienced that kind of mentality several times, mm -hmm. and I think that for one, you mentioned about how you're very in tune with how spirit feels, right? So you know yourself, you know, your higher self and your spirit, you know, Merlin's energy and you, you feel it because darkness and, and evil has a different feel to it. Right. So doesn't that, isn't that a part of it too, that you, I mean, when something shifts, you're aware of it pretty quickly. But when it shifts, it's shifting another wonderful spirit. You, exactly. That's what I'm saying. When we can, we feel it come in because right. so if I ever get six people at the table, everybody gets a message. Everybody talks to somebody. Mm -hmm. So we can't spend two hours talking to you, you know, your dad, Joanne, and then, you know, maybe your uncle comes in and your grandma and, and then, you know, everybody else is going, well, this is fun for you. Are my first husband's father. Exactly. <laughs> Things like that happen. <laughs> you're like, what? Like, you're like, going, do I really want to talk to you? No. <laughs> So, um, Sorry, you know, it, we'll just, but we'll say, let's, we'll ask you, we ask spirit to stay in the room with us, stay yeah. here, yeah. let somebody else come on. Yeah. And at the end, we always disconnect. So we are allowing spirit to use us, right? Mm -hmm. To use our body and our energy to move that table, to give us mm -hmm. messages, talk to us. So talk a little bit about that, you know, because we've talked about a little, a lot of kind of a lot of it right mm -hmm. but we didn't really talk about how it works you have a table and you do all of the preparations for the event to start right but everybody either sits or stands with their hand on the table it's not that you're putting your hand waiting down on the table you're lightly touching it just doing what what is that for just your fingertips mm -hmm little fingertips just it's just to get the energy and some people don't even put their whole hand on it their hand mm -hmm. might be this much just mm -hmm. like over it slightly mm -hmm. not even touching it and then the table will move it's the energy coming through us to, that is moving that table mm -hmm. and so to say towards the end when we're finished too we cut those cords and we say we're done Mm -hmm. Spirit's going home. You're not coming home with us. <laughs> um, it's just, we cut the, the energy and it's done. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing how spirit does listen to you because we set a time limit of two hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we go over two hours, the table stops. It will not go. We, the, you know, we, we set, so I think the, the most important thing is your intention. Yeah. That you're Absolutely. setting of what you want this mm -hmm. evening to be like. Mm -hmm. we're going to do this. We're going to talk to so-and-so we're going to give messages. You know, we might talk to angels. Mm -hmm. We might just say, who's, you know, who's your angel. Mm -hmm. One thing we do is um, past life, mm -hmm. which is pretty phenomenal. And everybody How will does that one work. I haven't done a past life. Explain. Okay. <laughs> so we all want to do a past life. Uh -huh. So we will start. We just did this the other night. Uh -huh. Um, it takes time because that's a lot of information and we'll say, you know, we want to learn about a past life of Joanne. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a year that she was alive and say it's going to be, you know, 1898. Okay. Well, we can't go the 1898, right? That'll take forever. So we cut it short. We'll say, was it in the 1800s? Yes or no. Was it in the 1900s? Yes or no. Then we go, what decade was it? You know, was it in the teens? Was it in the 20s? And we go through that. We get the year. Uh -huh. We get the country. We get, we'll ask, what were you? Uh-huh. Well, mama, were you a princess? Were you, um, so one thing I believe yeah. that we have all been connected in a past life. Oh, yeah. I, absolutely. I'm with right? you. Mm -hmm. And so people that we're with, and uh, one night we all did it um, as friends. It was just a friend thing. 
And we all found out, so I'm in Boston area, right? Salem, Massachusetts, that we were all in the um, Salem witch <laughs> um, era. And uh -huh. it's funny that we, we looked at, I forget the name of the street, but we looked up the street. And we found the street. Oh, my. So it's really, you can, there's so many different things that you can uh -huh. Uh -huh. do with it. Yeah, yeah. And it answers you. It, I mean, okay, so one of the things you triggered me on is it does answer by spelling things out, right. um, by raising and lowering, like it'll stop on the letter that you are saying is right. right. Or you can answer a yes or a no. It can show you what a yes or no is. But the, th the other in in extremely important part of it is that you don't have to spell out every word of every sentence. Can you talk about that? Because that would well, take forever. So how does that work? Forever, right. So that's where your mediumship skills come in. Mm -hmm. So um, when Beth does it with me, she hears spirit in her ear. Uh -huh. I know things. So she's got the clear audience. I have the clear cognizance. Uh -huh. So you'll just know. Or yeah. some, And as a matter of fact, if you were doing it with me, and I started spelling out a name, you're going to know, and you can uh -huh. feel them. Right. We'll, so then we cut it short. Is this, you know, Joe? Yeah, uh -huh. it is. And, yeah. And we move on from there because we want to get the message, right? We want to uh -huh. get what do they have to say to you, uh -huh. which is um, very important. Uh, one thing I have to tell you, this is a what? new thing. So yeah. I told you how um, it's always changing with us, right? Everything we do. Yeah. So we started seeing hands uh -huh. on our table and this probably happened i don't know a few months ago not even a year ago maybe six months mm -hmm. and, and and again it was like are you seeing that because i'm <laughs> seeing that <laughs> and you could see spirit hands on that table and um if you're clear odd um clairvoyant mm -hmm. you can see them yeah uh -huh. and it's also uh we get a little vortex of energy in the center ah. of the table. Uh -huh. So you can see that. It's like the table will stop, but you can see the energy. It's almost like a mist. Uh -huh. So, it, you know, like I said, the, the more we do it, uh -huh. the more spirit is giving to us. Right. It's true. And, you know, that goes with anything that we do. The more that we put into something, anything in life, right. the more we're going to get back from it. And this is the same way. And you also learn, I mean, I think a lot of people, a myth that a lot of people have is that if I do this, I'm all of a sudden going to open this whole world up. And we know now that it doesn't work that way. Spirit knows how to take us through the progression of learning and understanding and getting the information that's yes. right for us at the right time, right? I bet you must see that a lot at the table. Oh, all the time. And, and a funny thing is, so we uh, also teach a workshop mm -hmm. on how to facilitate your own table, right? Mm -hmm. People get a little frustrated and they don't realize that um, we've been doing this for years and years and years. Yeah. And then you get somebody who gets a table um, and they just want it to work right now, you know, but so you have to, oh, we would sit and have tea with the table. <laughs> You know, so we, we're just, yeah, you know, and I, we, I would, when we first started, I would sit with the table. Yeah. Maybe start off with 10 minutes because you feel funny sitting there. For yeah. A long time. But, you know, we, it, we, it's a natural, it's a progression. You know, it's, you know, it's just like a ballerina, right? Right. You, know, you gotta start to become the prima ballerina. Right. It's the same thing with tables. You, you have to take it slow. So what do you think are some myths about table tipping? Um, a myth. Well, people think that you move it. You have no idea. People think <laughs> that um, we have the, the look underneath it. Do you have a motor under there? Now, would you um, say that almost everybody their first time looks under that table? I, I, would I, I have to figure out a way to get a camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love the look on the faces, like uh -huh. when it actually moves. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I think the biggest myth is that it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I guess it's not really a myth. It's, it's dangerous if you don't treat it right. Exactly. Though, right. So we've had conversations with people that feel that it's dangerous, period. Right. 
And then there is some people that go into it like, okay, so one of the things I wanted to make sure we brought up, and this is a good time, is when you're doing any kind of mediumship, I feel, especially table tipping, and I know we both agree on this, that alcohol is not a good idea because you're lowering your vibration on that, right? Do you want to talk Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. So we have, you know, no spirits with spirit. You know, if you want to have a drink, you can have a drink after you're all done. Mm -hmm. But we, I never, ever, you know, I am in the purest uh, form when we're doing table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that is so very important. We have water. Because you want to make sure that you are bringing, you want to have your, your senses about you on target, exactly. right? Yeah. And everybody else should too, because just because you're the expert at medium or at table tipping and I'm coming to see you doesn't mean that I can't feel something's off. Because even when you go into any kind of situation like that, you should always follow your gut. Always, always. Follow your gut. So when you start putting alcohol in the mix of all that, you're totally deadening all of those emotions and that sharpness and... Oh, absolutely. I, I, I did, um, at one time, I did a party where there was drinking. Mm -hmm. and, um, I will never do it again. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty bad. It was bad for, for us, yeah. you know, because it was, it, then it became more of a game for people. And like I said, this is so, it is probably one of the most healing things that I, it's not a fun, I mean, it's fun to do it, yeah. to talk to your loved ones, but it's not a game. What do you call that? I love it when you say that. It's not a what? A parlor. It's not a parlor game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, not it's, not a a it's not a parlor game. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, this oh, is serious business. It's serious, you know? yeah. And it's just like any form of mediumship or right. even card reading. Would you, have a, would you go to a, a card reading and you know, be drinking while you're doing it? You just can't. You know, that's a really good point. Now that I think about it, I don't know that I've ever known anybody who goes drinking to get a card reading, but yeah. somehow people think that table tipping is a good, like going to play pool or something. <laughs> right. No, it's not. It's, it, it's serious business. And it yeah. really, it, like I said, I think the most important thing for me is the, the healing that I mm -hmm. see happen with other people. Can you talk about some yeah. of the most uh, impressionable like serious feeling that you I, I think the most um I even so um it's funny because when I do it so as you know my brother passed away mm -hmm. and um my brother has come on that table <laughs> and for me I just can't even get over it. I'm like oh my god and I don't I don't even know what to say to him because and that you know I before we get into the most healing thing, right? That reminds me, yeah, um, yeah. when you're doing table, right? So if I have my brother there, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so many people, they don't know what to say. Your mind just goes totally blank. Yeah. Like, totally, like if, if you said, Joanne, your dad's here, what do you want to say to him? Uh, 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 <laughs> we've had those situations, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, it's, so that happens a lot. Um, <laughs> But no matter what, I think just the feeling that he's there, right? You can you feel his energy, and you feel like you're actually with that person mm -hmm. one more time. And mm -hmm. so many times, uh, I remember one woman. Um, she asked a private question. We didn't know what it was, and he said um, he was proud. And she said, uh, she was asking him because he had never said, she was never sure that he was proud of her. Mm. So at this time he came to the, the table and he, you know, they'll just spell out a word, you know, it's not going to be, I am proud of you. Right. It's like proud. And then, you know, your mediumship skills come in. Mm -hmm. But that was so, she just broke down and cried because it, all those years, and she just wanted her dad to be proud of her. Right. And that's the type of thing that you just know it's so, it's just phenomenal when you what, see that. What are the common questions that people have for their loved ones on the other side? I'm sure you must see a pattern of typical. No, the, the pattern is, um, I don't know what to ask you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really. <laughs> 
Um, but okay, I would say okay, so let me ask you really fast. I'm sorry. This yeah. is really interesting because I know you do mediumship, platform mediumship, mediumship. You, if you want to talk to Marsha, you could call her and she would do mediumship for you. But you also do table tipping, which is another form. Like we said, it's physical. Right. Do you find that the same thing happens when you're doing a mediumship face to face with somebody and the table's not there that they're not sure what to ask or is the table somehow? Well, changed? you're really, when you're doing a, a different, the, the platform mediumship, people aren't asking questions. Oh, that's it, true. They're getting right evidence it, and then a message comes through. Exactly. It's not like I have this last thing to tell you or. Right. Exactly. You. Spirit gives them a message. Okay. And that's why, you know, we call it conversation with spirit. Mm -hmm. because you can mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. and it, it, most, I guess one thing most people ask yeah. is if somebody else is with them. You know, if, if oh. my brother were there, I'd say, Louie, you know, is Bobby with you? Yeah. <laughs> is so, so with you? Yeah. Um, what are you doing up there? And <laughs> that's, <laughs> That's such a common thing. What do you do? Are you dancing? Are you having fun? The uh -huh. key, I guess the, the big thing is that there's no more pain. If somebody was sick, if somebody uh, had any kind of uh, physical ailments, mm -hmm. it's gone. Mm -hmm. And that is that makes people here so oh, happy. Yeah. yeah. That is that's that's big. That's one of the big things. How about mental issues? Is that mm -hmm. our mental issues? If you were here with mental issues, I with think so. You know, I'm, I, I kind of think so. of that coming up. Yeah. And That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. The, I don't know if people know, it's an interesting topic, but um, that um, when they come back in physical form and they usually come back when they, they felt their best. Like, right. <laughs> Like, exactly. I'm awesome at 35. I'm going to yeah. show up as 35 year old. I'm it coming back as 28. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite. So yeah, when you look good, you know, you feel good. It was a good time in your life. Um, that's if you know. I think when people are presenting themselves for uh, mental mediumship, right? Uh, so we don't really get physical descriptions with people. Yeah. Oh yeah, of, that's true. You're totally you're getting working on energy. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can as you're sitting there because, like I said, uh, it's it's particularly fun if you're doing a table tipping with a bunch of mediums, and everybody can see and hear and you know different things like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, for just the general public to come in, they're they're just talking with their with their people. Um, I know in my area, table tipping is not very popular. Um, it's really hard for me to find people that do it. But in, if you were looking for this kind of um, mediumship, how would somebody go about doing that? Do you think, or what would somebody look for in somebody who does it? Look for, to find someone who does it? Or, or if, if they somebody... did find somebody, how, what would they look for in that person to make sure that they have the right qualifications to do okay. it? So, um, I don't know a lot of people who do it either out here. This, I mean, it's a little bit, it's getting a little bit popular, but you know, there's not a lot of people who do it, but it's the same um, thing I would look for if you're looking for somebody who does uh, tarot card readings or Oracle card readings or any kind of a mediumship reading for you. Mm -hmm. People have to have integrity. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to look for is, um, you know, you've heard all the, the people who will do a readings and say, oh, you have a curse and for another $500, I'll take that curse off you. So, <laughs> you know, it's the same type of thing, right? You need somebody right. with integrity. Uh, everything with us really is word of mouth or, right. you know, we, we go to a, a center and we do table tipping. Mm -hmm. People know that we go there. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's really word of mouth. I think it's... Mm -hmm. Like so I think the, the main thing is to make sure that they have a good reputation. Again, follow your gut in the right. decision making, but also make sure that they have integrity and a background and right. know what they're doing and they're not doing it in a bar. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> if, 
they say table tipping and, and mimosas. You can yeah. skip it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not for you. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I love doing it. I love, I, okay, so one of the things I wanted to say too that we've actually done is it is possible to do table tipping on the internet. It is possible. <laughs> Someone's uh, table will work and somebody's table will not, but it is possible to. <laughs> it was possible. Um, it was possible. It, it, does feel a little different, <laughs> but we could do it. So it's, I guess it's kind of like doing um, a reading. Yeah. Right. A reading yeah. online, yeah. you know, yeah. same type of thing. But I, I recall Joanne when, when we did it, yeah. yeah. Uh, the table walked over. I think we, you were, I don't know if you were on the computer or an iPad, <laughs> you were, yeah. but the table walked right over to the yeah. iPad yeah. to, you know, give the, because we have a thing, everybody gets a hug first thing. <laughs> So um, when we do, and, and it's so true. So I, I have to tell this funny story. So um, Merlin really has a sense of humor. Uh -huh. So he will always, always, 100% of the time, give Beth a hug. He'll give every, he'll walk around to the different people. Yeah. And he'll always give Beth a hug, right? Yeah. And I don't get one. I don't get I one. I don't get one to the very <laughs> end. I mean, it's always like, and it's kind of funny because it turned into this thing. I was like, well, what about me? And then I'd walk over to somebody else. And so it's just, it's a funny thing that we have this little thing going on with us that, you know, so spirit has such a sense of humor. Uh -huh. it, it's just phenomenal. So I have another thing to tell you. So we, when, when we do table, we have people sit in a semicircle, right? Uh -huh. And we will sit in the middle. We don't know where the table's going. It might go in a line, which not really, doesn't happen yeah. often. But it yeah. might go to you know, the fourth person, then back to number one. Mm -hmm. So it, it has started going to through, through everybody. And then there's one person on the end. It walks behind that, the person next to them to get to the last person. So <laughs> we were like, what's happening here? But that's why what I'm telling you, like every time you do it, yeah. something new is happening. So it's just such a sense of humor. We have such a good relationship with me, Beth, and Merlin. And yeah. it's just, it's total trust right. in each other. I could sense that people may be wondering what the heck you're talking about when you say the table walks. And it is an amazing thing to actually see a three-legged table walk. Can you kind of explain to them what that is like to see a table yes. walk around a room? <laughs> I know. It sounds funny, right? It does. So the table's on three legs. It goes mm -hmm. up on one, and then it, sometimes it spins a little bit, and it lands on the other two. And then it goes back up on the opposite leg, mm -hmm. and it will spin a little, so it will just kind of rotate uh -huh. and roll by itself. It is an amazing thing to watch. It is an and amazing. And it's almost thing. like when you have like a three hundred pound table, and you're kind of like, you know how you kind of jostle it to get it to move. It's exactly. almost like that, but but it's light. It's like a feather that just kind of does it in a dance. That's it, exactly. the thing that's the most amazing is that when the table moves, it's almost like poetic. It's very graceful. And, and, and it's so light. And especially when we get that big, we have one table, it is heavy. And when that one, you know that spirit is loving on you when that one goes up because it's so heavy and it does not hug everyone. Not mm -hmm. everyone gets it, but usually somebody who is in need of some spiritual healing Mm -hmm. that that table will just, it, it lifts up on one, when we, I still can't believe it when I, I say it, because it, wow. it's so pretty, and it lifts up, it's light as a feather, uh -huh. and it's just giving, and the person can feel that energy, yeah. I think that's the key to table tipping that I love, is you can, you feel that person. You, you really them. do, and it can bring you to tears, because you know what's happening, it's not a question of, is this true or not, it's the yeah. truth. You know what's happening. Right. What is the biggest group that you would do a table tipping with? Um, well, we have a big table. Yeah. That we can, we pro well, I'll give you the general, okay? So most yeah. of the time we have six people mm -hmm. and seven, including 
Beth and me. So mm -hmm. we've got nine people maybe at the table. Mm -hmm. Wow. We can do more if we're not going to give loved ones messages, but maybe we're just going to give them a color, a, like a, a demonstration. Of mm -hmm. like, this is how table works. Not everybody's going to get a message. Mm -hmm. You can do like, you know, I think we've, we've done 25 people. Wow. As a demonstration. So not everybody will get a, um, right. A message. But as a matter of fact, uh, we are going to practice that because we're going to Lilydale, New York in um, August. Wow. And there might be a lot of people there. So we yeah. are going to figure out how are we going to give messages to everybody. Yeah. Uh, is the table going to walk to somebody and give them a message? Or are we going to have somebody come up to the table and sit with us if we say, you know, um, Joe is here and typical gallery, right? If you're yeah. seeing platform meetings, right. Right. similar to that. So we're going to see how many we can oh, do, but okay. I think it's time to do more because it's, um, when we just have six people, I mean, it's beautiful, yeah. but you want to touch so many people. Right, right. And, you know, it's like when you go to a platform mediumship, um, they don't talk to everybody, but usually there's a message for somebody out of that. So I would see, see the same thing being true. Yeah, that's what I, I think is going to happen. So we're going to. So do you think that um, one person can do a table tipping by themselves? What do you feel about that? Should somebody um, be afraid to start doing it or doing it by themselves? Well, I wouldn't recommend doing it by yourself. I mean, you can. But so the, the energy that you have, right, you're going to bring with two people mm -hmm. is going to, like I said, when we started doing it, we did it together all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you get energy. The collective energy really helps it to move. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, I can do it by myself. I don't particularly care to do it by myself. I would like to communicate with spirit in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> so much work. <laughs> it is, it's a lot of work, but I I like it um, yeah. to show people that spirit right is there. That, yeah. That's why I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a, well, like you said, it's physical, so it's like tangible. Somebody can see and feel at the same time that this is uh, my brother Louis. You know what right. I mean? So yeah, I can see that. And it's interesting too um, if you don't. If you watch a video of it, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not the same because um, people, oh, you're pushing it, um, all these things, right? Yeah. But it's when you actually feel it. That's yeah. when you, it's undeniable. It's mm -hmm. so, you feel the energy, you feel the table move. Mm -hmm. There is nothing, in my opinion, better than that because it, mm -hmm. I've seen too much healing going on to know that this this is important mm -hmm. it really is good and i think mediumship in general any way you do it is a positive thing but everybody reacts to things differently and and accepts things differently so right. like if i'm ha giving you a mediumship reading for your uncle um you know i could be making anything up it wouldn't resonate with you though. That's a whole other side of it. But the point exactly. is that it's still arbitrary where the right. table is very physical. <laughs> it, right. And it will, and it's so, um, one time, and I can't remember the details, right. But yeah. so spelling out C C. And so we're thinking this is a mistake. Yeah. What is C -C? And it, we said, come on, try it again and, and do it. And kept coming back to the same thing <laughs> and we just had no idea what it meant well I think it was somebody's cat it was named oh. CC and and finally somebody popped up and said well that's what it is uh -huh. um so in another time you know you think like I said you you're making it up so we had um PA PA uh -huh. and we're like what's what is that Papa so we said, does anybody have a papa here? No, nope, nobody has papa. And we're like, okay, so we're wrong. Yeah. Of course, we're wrong. And so we exactly. Said, this again, and it kept doing papa. Uh -huh. And we were like, well, sure nobody has a papa. Nobody has a papa. So we said, well, 
we're sorry, spirit. We have to move on because nobody's claiming you and we don't know a papa. <laughs> so about, I don't know, a little while later, this woman pops up. She goes, oh my, papa is my grandpa. That's what we called him. As a matter of fact, I have two puppas. But it's, it's similar to when it's a, a mediumship demonstration, like on platform, right? People yeah. get amnesia. Yeah. You forget things. And then, you know, later on you say like, oh, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I just happened. had that happen. This is, I don't know if it's always amnesia, but like, you know, like I said, my my father-in-law from my first husband came through with all of these like things that I just had no idea. Right. And it was like, I know, I don't know this person. And, but the medium wouldn't stop. Right. She just kept on going with questions and okay. And well, it may be this and maybe that we're trying to put all this stuff together right. and it wasn't working. And she's like, Nope, I'm sticking with what I know to be true until finally he said his name and I, and said his name and fishing. I was like, Oh, I know who it was. So sometimes <laughs> there are people so far removed That's that are right. still watching over you. And he had a message that he wanted to give to me which was very interesting. So that's, I think, a part of what happens too, because I don't have a lot of people in my close circle that have passed away, thankfully. I have a few, but not a whole lot. And so I'm getting all these other people now that are coming in that I've forgotten about, or you know, I haven't thought about in over 50 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happens so often. Like uh -huh. people want, you know, their, their immediate person, right? Uh -huh. And then they might get a second cousin or the next door neighbor. Uh -huh. <laughs> they want to talk to the next door neighbor, uh -huh. but always the next door neighbor has something nice to say. You know, yeah. It yeah. really is. And a lot of times as well, uh, the next door neighbor might come in, but they might be bringing somebody else in, you know, like oh, a, yeah. a mother-in-law might be bringing in your father because the mother-in-law came first and then the, mm -hmm. the father came along next so you never know There's who's usually gonna... a reason for who comes in it's not just they don't just come by because they have nothing to do they have, exactly. a, they have something they want you to know or something that they're trying to mend or heal or whatever so there's a reason of that yes particular. and that's I think sometimes like um, I was just talking to somebody who did a mediumship and a reading and so the way that it worked out is this one lady had gone and she really wanted to, to connect with a part of her family. And, but her cousin or somebody who came with her had just lost somebody younger and it was just devastated about it and really wanted to, to connect with that soul that had passed. And her whole family got together and made sure that that soul went to the boy who needed that, which was just an amazing experience to see even in the spiritual world, they're going to do what's for our best and highest good. That's right. They, they all work together. Because I know? think people get frustrated when they go to mediumships and they're like, you know, or platform mediumship and they're like, why do I never get a reading? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you know what? And that's why, well, I mean, because we keep it small, right? We have six. Yeah. Months. Everybody gets a reading, you know. It's really a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful thing to do it. It really is beautiful. It's, it's probably one of the more beautiful things I've ever experienced. Yeah, I, I agree. I love it so much. You know, it's funny when you don't do it for a while. And mm -hmm. as soon as I sit down and you feel the, the, the comfort mm -hmm. of just those spirit, spirit worlds, you know, wants everybody to be happy, wants everybody to experience that love and to, when we do it i just i i can't get enough of it right it's just, right it's so beautiful and you're very in demand for it as well I, well you know we are pretty we're getting well known um it's something to experience you know it really is amazing yeah i think because it's just you can't believe it. You can't believe what you see. You know, it, it's, well, it's just, just like you said, it's not very popular now either. It is somewhat growing. Like here, I have not found, I found one person here that I wouldn't have done it with. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I haven't found anybody who does it here in this area. And uh, it's frustrating for me. <laughs> I want to 
I want a table tip here. You, you've got to get out and, uh, you know, I don't know, put the sign out. <laughs> I, I've been putting out to the universe. But it isn't as well known. I've talked to a lot of people who have never even heard of it. Yeah. But it well, is something that is becoming more known. I never knew either. And I just took that leap of faith to take this class. I'm like, never heard of it. Let's go see what it's about. It was, you know, the curiosity. Uh -huh. what, what is that? And yeah. when I did it, I was... I was just amazed. And yeah, like, yeah. It was just, it's such a, I, I just love it. I, I love it because I love the conversation that you can have. Yeah. And, it's you know, awesome. people, if you have questions about this form of mediumship, please put in the chat and ask because Marsha will be able to answer. I mean, she really is very good at it and she's done it for a long time and she knows what she's doing and she's experienced all kinds of awesome uh experiences through it so don't be afraid of it i think it's something that can really be a healing and you've seen the healing in oh, people that and so and much seen it, you know how it really heals people i it, think it we, people. we don't there's such a conflict of the other side and what do we believe and what do we know and and when you get that validation that only your loved one would be able to give to you then it, it helps you. It gives you encouragement and peace. It gives you peace to know. I think the most thing is when people have passed mm -hmm. um, in either a traumatic way mm -hmm. or a painful way, mm -hmm. to know that they're okay. Yeah. Or to know that somebody who is wheelchair bound is up dancing. Like, right. How great is that? Exactly. It's a really sense of peace. Yes. It really, really, it just gives me the chills. It really has been. Yeah. And there's a lot of controversy out there. So no, there's controversy out there. <laughs> I know this controversy. I know. And, um, but from our experience and the way that we keep in the light, it has been a beautiful experience. Absolutely beautiful. And you do other forms of mediumship. So if, if anybody wants to connect with you on that level, you are available. And you also do card reading. So, and you're awesome at it. Well, and you... you get right to the point you hold nothing back you are great at it I am so, a little blunt i think but no you're not blunt in a bad I'm, way you're in a good I'm not a bad way no i you know this is how i, I look at um well, at people reading look at reading. blunt as bad so yeah okay so maybe not, we can rephrase your i get to the point or okay, okay so go ahead with what you're saying i'm sorry so sorry. what what i like about um doing a reading yeah. is to help you help yourself, right? Yes. To help spirit help you help yourself. Yes. That, and that is it, important for people to know. Say that again, because you don't go to somebody for a reading to give you an answer you don't take responsibility for. Say it again. That's okay. right. So a reading <laughs> is for spirit yes. to help you help mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. Because you know, um, if you're gonna, am I gonna get married? next year you know well there's so much so, there's free will involved there's other people involved exactly. you cannot predict the energy at the moment is what's happening and how you deal with it and, you know um it's just gonna not drop on your lap you get it you have to go for the opportunities that are presented to you and take responsibility for what's in your life because you can say the energy right now shows me it's everybody is in this picture at this time willing to go that way right. you may wake up tomorrow and decide you may not want to so what are you going to do and i would say listen to that <laughs> yes that's the, the key is to listen i have so yeah. many experiences where i would not listen and then when i finally listen and you know it's always good i do a reading for myself every day yeah i journal mm -hmm. and it's fun to look back Mm -hmm. and say like, hmm, it was right. I, I did need to listen to this. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, it, it helps you stay on what is the highest and best for you yes. Yes. Right? Yes. at that moment. How to really? live, you, you know, you can take the, the long, hard road or you can yeah. take the easy road. Yes. That's, and that's what it's helping you with. Favorite saying. I always yeah. told my kids that when they grew up. You have two choices. The hard road or the easy road? You That's get to right. choose. Either way, you're going to get to the end. Which way do you want to get there? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. It's very true. Yeah, I was gonna, you brought up a subject. I mean, we could go all through this. There's so many things about it. Um, 
card reading and but taking responsibility is the key right now that we're talking about and mm -hmm. going into the victimhood is not a good idea because mm -hmm. things happen in our lives for a reason for us to take responsibility for our life and it's right. when we don't do that that we have the problems and then we have to go to people like you who tell us what to do when we know what to do exactly and the, and the thing is you know you may be presented with um, an opportunity mm -hmm. where you know if you say and you pick the cards and say you know that's a good opportunity why don't you take advantage yeah of that? yeah uh, but then maybe you don't yeah. I'm I'm a good one for it maybe I don't we're all that way we're all that yeah. way we yeah. don't know and we're afraid that now we're going to go into the afraid conversation. That's right. What but the, no, the, this is the, the conversation okay. that we're going to all remember is yeah. trust, right? You're going to trust That's that right. this, is, this is the right way to go. It's for your right. highest and best and trust that things are going to be a-okay. Right. Yeah, it is in the end. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And again, I will put, I have in the description how to get a hold of you. And I will put in the chat again how to get a hold of you of you. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it in there. I know this is a big subject. It's not well known. So you may have a lot of questions about it, but we will answer whatever questions we can. And you, and you know what? One thing um, everybody can do is on Facebook is conversation with spirit. Oh, yeah. Uh, look that up there. I think there is even some videos that you might uh, have a look. Okay. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. yeah. I want to thank everybody for being with us. We've had a great time. I thank you so much for being with us, Marsha. You have been a great guest. Thank you for telling us all about table tipping and sharing your experiences with us. Well, thank you, Joanne, for having me and uh, giving me the opportunity because it's something that I love and the hour flew by so fast. So it did, didn't it? Thank you, everybody. Yeah, it did. And I, we will have Marsha back because, like I said, she is an expert in how to bring joy back into your life and teaches a class on bringing joy back into your life because I think sometimes we get so burdened with our day-to-day -day stuff and we could forget what joy is all about. And if you have a grateful and a, a joyful attitude, then life goes so much better and more comes. Yes, exactly. The more you have, the, the more it comes to you. Yeah. Like attracts like, so that's what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody, again, who is going to watch the replay of this. Again, on that, also put your comments in, and we uh, will talk to you again next time. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, what did you feel? <laughs> I thought it was, did you like it? Yes. You did awesome. I had so many things going through my mind at the, you know, it's like, you know, I got to ask her that. And I, I hate to look down and write. So I try to do it without doing that. So. Yeah. I, it was really, um, I know there's so many things you could just keep on going on going. Yeah. It's, you it's hard really to stay good. like, cause you know, the new, new thought comes into your head and you're like, Oh, I got to go over there. <laughs> yeah. Rat, squirrel, yeah. squirrel. How did you enjoy it? Did you? Feel I like loved it, Joanne. You? And I I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because when I tell you this is your gift, <laughs> you can, because you make every, you made me feel like I am in a room. You're just sitting there with me. It makes it so easy. I didn't think that one other person was watching us. I just thought I was talking to you. <laughs> and that's well, key. You did a good job if you didn't think anybody was watching because you nailed it. You did <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. But no, you did, Joanne. My, I mean, this is your what calling. Do you know of the history. Of <laughs> <laughs> Did you go back to the data store? I didn't mean it that way. I should have re questioned, reworded my question. I meant how, you know, what do you know of, you know, you did perfect. You answered yeah. that perfectly. You came out it, of it okay. I know. It was, it was good, though, Joanne. <laughs> You'll have to look at some of the questions. Mary, Mary Ellen was like just, Oh, I, didn't even, I couldn't see anything. It was crazy. What was so, she saying? Well, she was just asking. I'm trying. I can't. I have to get out of this to go in there. And I don't want to do that right oh, now. Yeah. But she was like, um, you know, she brought up the Ouija board, why you had to use the wooden table. Um, I don't know. She had a few odd ones that I didn't even. Oh, yeah. I just gave up because she was just trying to railroad the. Oh, yeah. She would. Yeah. But Cynthia was on. 
um, Cindy was on, Fallon was on, Denise Oxley was on. Oh, so wow. Good. Yeah. And uh, good. someone you knew, I can't remember who it was, was on. We had 119 people watch it at some point, interact in this. 119? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. And 31 people actually engaged in the whole event, either by smiley faces or comments or whatever. Wow. Yeah. And that's, that's right at the gate. So that's going to pick up a lot more people. Yeah. Wow. That will good. be able And I didn't get in the um, retreat, but we'll have a Facebook Live oh. on that. Oh, my God. We did so much. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, Ann, seriously, you're so good at this. I'm not kidding you. Like, you got to interview, like, everybody. <laughs> it's so, like, you're, it's a gift, Joanne. You're, you have a gift. Okay. I'm, I'm not giving up on it yet. Although I was thinking about it last week. I was like, oh God, why am I doing this? But oh. it's fun. I enjoy doing it because I'm not making money at it. You know, it's all coming. Okay, so. I know. How do you make yeah. money at it? Well, um, I'm starting to kind of come up with that, but not, it's going to take me a time because I have to get a following. I have to get enough people that are going to want to help me make money at it. This was a following, 150 people. 19. I thought there was going to be like two. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got a good, uh, this is a good um, first live, well, I've had higher live numbers, but this is a really good live high number. Mm. So it, it did really well. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a higher overall number from what I could tell. Do you think that you could make money by having sponsors? Like there's got to be a way. That's how you, you're going to get, like, pe not necessarily people to pay to watch you. But sponsors, but right. You have to have a following of in the thousands for people to start getting noticed for that. Mm -hmm. So I have work to do still, yeah. But I, I know that there's other things that I have to do to make it better. Like, um, oh, yeah, I'm trying to be a lot more consistent with posting Mm -hmm. Um, I think that I need to work a little more on my, I don't know, I'm debating on working a little more about how I do interviews. Um, I don't know. I think there's, I, I need to up my game somehow. I'm not sure how yet. I'm not sure either because it's pretty great. Aww. It really is. Thank you. You, you, oh, you, have, you, know, a, it's you have a natural knack for, you know? I think it's just- If I were interviewing you- I wouldn't know what to say. I'm not kidding you. Like I wouldn't. Like you. Like how, how did you come up with what you asked? I was like, oh my, that's a great question. Well, I listen. I'm just listening. You would do mm -hmm. the same thing. I'm just listening to spirit and what you know. It's like my thinking is spirit's going to tell me what the the majority are thinking, and right. that's how I come up with my question is by listening to that. Yeah, you're good. Well, thank you. I had fun. It was fun. I had a lot of fun interviewing you. It was thank great. You. I had fun too. Yeah. I can good. tell you thank calmed you. down. At first, I thought you were going to climb out of your skin, but you did. You calmed down pretty fast. Yeah. It's, I, I, so I went to this thing, right, on marketing. Yeah. And we had to talk about ourselves. Yeah. I kind of talk about myself, Joanne. Like, Obviously. Said, you didn't even know what to say. I, I don't. Why? I, I don't know. That value you not valuing yourself because you have a lot of things that you're doing and you do every day when so, you talk about even the paralegal stuff and that's not even tapping into what you really love doing when you talk about the woo woo stuff right? and look at how busy you are and so, people are in demand of you I know. so listen to this i went um with my friend right yeah. and so we each had to talk about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do it. She couldn't talk about herself either. So then the woman said, we'll talk about each other.